Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer, Tuesday evening, Tuesday the 11th of, of July, and um, it's, a, it's a bit drizzly, wet outside, because the rain has been on and off, so I'm indoors this evening. Today we are remembering St. Benedict of Nursia, the founder of uh, Western monasticism. And so let's let's pray as we come to the end of another day. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. And our psalm this evening is Psalm 107, Psalm 107. It's a, a, a long, another long psalm this evening, so let's, let's get straight to it. This doesn't have a refrain. It has a prayer, but no refrain at the end even though there are some sentences that are repeated, some verses that are repeated. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those he redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went astray in desert wastes and found no path to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul was fainting within them. So they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he would deliver them from their distress. He set their feet on the right way till they came to a city to dwell in. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and the wonders he does for his children. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with good. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound fast in misery and iron. But they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed down their head with heaviness. They stumbled and there was none to help them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and out of the shadow of death and broke their bonds asunder. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and his wonders and the wonders he does for his children. For he has broken the doors of bronze and breaks the bars of iron in pieces. Some were foolish and took a rebellious way and were plagued because of their wrongdoing. Their soul abhorred all manner of food and drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from, their, from destruction. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and the wonders he does for his children. 
let them offer him sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his acts of sh with shouts of joy. Those who go down to the sea in ships and ply their trade in great waters, these have seen the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For at his word the stormy wind arose and lifted up the waves of the sea. They were carried up to the heavens and down again to the deep. Their soul melted away in their peril. They reeled and staggered like a drunkard and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out of their distress. He made the storm be still and the waves of the sea were calmed. Then were they glad because they were at rest and he brought them to the haven they desired. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. The Lord turns rivers into wilderness and water springs into thirsty ground. A thirst. A, a, a fruitful land he makes a salty waste because of the wickedness of those who dwell there. He makes the wilderness a pool of water and water springs out of a thirsty land. There he settles the hungry. And they build a city to dwell in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and bring in a fruitful harvest. He blesses them so that they multiply greatly. He does not let their, their herds of cattle decrease. He pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. They are diminished and brought low through stress of misfortune and sorrow. But he raises the poor from their misery and multiplies their families like flocks of sheep. The upright will see this and rejoice, but all wickedness will shut its mouth. Whoever is wise will ponder these things and consider the loving kindness of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer. O living Christ, Rescue us from foolish passion and still the storms of our self-will. And as you are our anchor in this life, so bring us to the haven you have prepared for us. For your mercy's sake. Amen. I'm going to read the meditation for this psalm, Psalm 107. <clears throat> It says the point of Psalm 107 is captured in its final verse. Whoever is wise will ponder these things and consider the loving kindness of the Lord. The, the entire psalm leads to this conclusion. For the entire psalm is a recitation of concrete examples of the steadfast love of the Lord to those wandering in barren places to those sitting in darkness, to those suffering from their own sinful folly, and to those caught in a storm, we are to consider the steadfast love of the Lord. The Hebrew verb consider here means to understand, to discern, to perceive, to ponder. The point is that in considering God's history of delivering his people, we are to see in those rescues the steadfast love, the certain mercy of the Lord. The psalmist himself in verses 33 to 42 helps us to understand how the steadfast love of the Lord operates. Ponder what is being said. The psalmist is saying that the Lord saves his people through reversals. It is the parched land that becomes a spring of water. It is the hungry who establish a city. It is the needy 
who are raised up. This vindication through reversal is not an anomaly of this psalm. It is how God delights to work. He takes the high and makes them low. He takes the low and makes them high. He manifests his strength through weakness. Supremely, of course, he manifests his saving glory through a cursed cross. The gospel is a final great reversal. The sinless one suffered condemnation so that the sinful ones might not. Anyone who by God's grace can humble himself to receive Christ's work as a free gift will be forgiven and glorified and will enjoy the new heavens and the new earth. But the only way in is to get low. The proud, those who believe they deserve heaven, are the very ones who do not. Amen. Amen. I love that. I wonder who wanted to read that. The, the, the re God operates in reversals. The, the very opposite of how this world works, sisters and brothers. The world cares about the, the biggest, the smartest, the richest, the most powerful. God looks at the weak, the poor, the, the, the downcast, the outcast. The, and he raises up the poor. He, he brings down the rich, as Mary says in her song. And he lifts up the poor and needy. Amen. Let's um, let's move on. Uh, in fact, let's say, let's let's say a um, prayer of, or or collect for today, which is the collect for Saint Benedict of Nursia. Eternal God, who made Benedict a wise master, in the school of your service, and a guide to many called into community to follow the rule of Christ. Grant that we may put your love before all else and seek with joy the way of your commandments through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God for people like St. Benedict, founder of Western monasticism, who was the one to give us rules of, uh, the rules of the monastery and many men and women became monks and nuns who devote their lives to the service of God and live, as it were, in community and, um, and help to make a difference to the history of the church, the history of the faith. All right, let's uh, move to our first reading, our Old Testament reading, which is 1 Samuel chapter 1, from verse 21 to chapter 2. And verse 11. So 1 Samuel 1, 21. The next year, Elkanah and his family went, to, went on their annual trip to offer a sacrifice to the Lord and to keep his vow. But Hannah did not go. She told her husband, Wait until the boy is weaned, then I will take him to the tabernacle and leave him there with the Lord with the Lord permanently. Whatever you think best is best, Elkanah agreed. Stay here for now, and may the Lord help you keep your promise. So she stayed home and nursed the boy until he was weaned. When the child was weaned, Hannah took him to the tabernacle in Shiloh. They brought along a three year old bull for for the sacrifice and a basket of flour and some wine. After sacrificing the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. Sir, do you remember me? Hannah asked. I am the very woman who stood here several years ago praying to the Lord. I asked the Lord to give me this boy and he has granted my request. Now I am giving him to the Lord and he will belong to the Lord his whole life. And they worshipped the Lord there. Chapter 2. Then Hannah prayed, my, my heart rejoices in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. Now I have an answer for my enemies. I rejoice because you rescued me. No one is holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. 
Stop acting so proud and haughty. Don't speak with such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows what you have done. He will judge your actions. The bow of the mighty is now broken. And those who stumbled are now strong. Those who were well fed are now starving. And those who were starving are now full. Is that reversal again? The childless woman now has seven children. And the woman with many children wastes away. The Lord gives both death and life. He brings some down to the grave, but raises others up. The Lord makes some poor and others rich. He brings some down and lifts others up. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among princes, placing them in seats of honor. For all the earth is the Lord's, and he has set the world in order. He will protect his faithful ones, but the wicked will disappear in darkness. No one will succeed by strength alone. Those who fight against the Lord will be shattered. He thunders against them from heaven. The Lord judges throughout the earth. He gives power to his king. He increases the strength of his anointed one. Then Elkanah returned home to Ramah without Samuel, and the boy served the Lord by assisting Eli the priest. Amen. All right, so that is, that, so Hannah has given, has lived up to her word. She's promised the Lord that if God gave her a son, she will dedicate that son back to God. And she has done that after the boy was weaned. He, she, brought, she brought Samuel to Eli and left him in the care of the priest. And that's, that's where Samuel went. But then Hannah has a song. And this song of Hannah is very similar to the song of Mary in the New Testament. When Mary, when Mary found out that she was going to have a, a, a son herself. Another son that is um, that is dedicated to God. Um, Mary sang a very similar song. We call it the Magnificat. It begins in almost the exact same way as this one. My heart rejoices in the Lord. Um, Mary says, my soul rejoices in the Lord. And some of the very same themes that Hannah brings out in her song Mary also brings out in her song in, in Luke in Luke's in Luke chapter 2. So here in 1 Samuel chapter 2, Hannah sings praise to God. And it's that great reversal. God brings some down and raises others up. He brings down the rich and he raises the poor. He, you know, they, they, the, 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 those who are well fed are now starving. Those who are starving are now full. The, the childless woman now has seven children. Those with seven children waste away and so on this is this great reversal that god does the whole point is that god you cannot predict god god is an awesome god and god works the way he chooses to work in our lives and and hannah has experienced that that power of god in her life and now i mean one of the things she says now i have an answer for my enemies i rejoice because you rescued me what did God rescue? God rescued her from shame and disgrace from, from within the community. Now she has an answer. She's no longer the barren woman of the village. She now has a son, and that son is dedicated to the service of God. So now, whenever anybody asks her, she has a son, and that son is in the service of God. So she, God has taken away her disgrace. She now has an answer. For her enemies love that because God has rescued her rescued her from shame from disgrace from ridicule that she's been going through especially from her sister wife <laughs> Penina all right let's move forward we have our New Testament reading which is first uh, first uh, Luke 19 Luke 19 from verse 41 to the end. Yep. Luke 19, 41 
to the end. But as he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, Jesus began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way, of, the way to peace. But now it is too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. Then Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people selling animals for sacrifices. He said to them, the scriptures declare, my temple will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. After that, he taught daily in the temple, but the leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the other leaders of the people began planning how to kill him. But they could think of nothing because all the people hung on every word he said. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So on the one hand, Jesus weeps over the temple, over Jerusalem. And on the other hand, he clears the temple of the misuse of God's, God's house. Um, the people are selling animals for sacrifice. It is Passover. And Passover, you need to bring an animal for sacrifice. And uh, of course, if you're coming from far, you you bring your money and then buy your animal in in Jerusalem. Well, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's where they were selling the animal. They were selling the animal in the temple, in the temple courts. In fact, it was the place of the Gentile, the place where the Gentiles are to gather to pray. And Jesus was displeased with this attitude. Because by taking over the, the space where the Gentiles are meant to pray, they are, they are basically saying, you're not welcome in this temple. And, um, and Jesus was not happy with the way they were treating, I guess, the Gentiles, as well as the, the way they were treating God's temple. The temple will be my house for prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Um, scripture that Jesus quotes here from... Um, from Isaiah and Jeremiah. My temple is, will be a house of prayer. That's from Isaiah. You have made it into a den of thieves, Jeremiah. And, and Jesus is basically showing um, the people that this space is meant to be used for prayer, not for market. Uh, um, now, of course, New Testament-wise, we are the temple. The temple is not the building. The temple is God, is us. We are the temple. And the question is, are we misusing our temple? In fact, the body is a temple. Our bodies are the temple. And, um, and, and so if we are misusing the temple, Jesus will, will chastise us for the misuse of the temple of God. This is us, the body. Our bodies are God's temple. And we need to be very careful how we misuse the temple. Um, but but on the other hand, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem, and it's a it's a powerful um, lament over the city of Jerusalem, how how the, the Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. But Jesus said, you know, how I wish that today that you of all people would understand the way of peace. But it has it's it's it has deluded eluded you. You no longer. Um, understand peace he says Jerusalem is going to be destroyed one day your enemies are going to come and and pull down every brick from every side why he says because you did not recognize it when God came into your midst this is this is the amazing thing is Jerusalem Jerusalem is the center of the Jewish religion the center of the Jewish faith 
And because they reject Christ, Jesus says, you are going to be judged. And that judgment is going to come in the form of the destruction of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the walls are going to fall down. The temple is going to be destroyed. And all because you did not recognize when God came in your midst. This is Jesus. Jesus is God in the flesh. And because they, had, they, they, they did not recognize the coming of God in Jesus Christ, their judgment is coming. And, and it's the same for, not just for Jerusalem, but for anyone, sisters and brothers, who do not recognize that God has come in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ. That the, the destruction the, the, of those people, of those, those, that town, that community, is sure because they, they, they reject, they reject the coming of God in their midst. And anyone who reject the coming of Jesus in their midst will be will be judged severely in the end um if we do not acknowledge who jesus is that he is he's god in human flesh and worship him as as we ought and as he deserves then judgment will fall judgment came on on the jewish religion in the form of the destruction of the temple in AD 70. And for everyone, for every town, for every city, for every, for every person who do not acknowledge this Jesus, judgment will come. And one day there'll be a final judgment upon this world for the rejection of Jesus Christ. That is its sisters and brothers. And, and so let's use our temple wisely for the glory of God. Let's pray. All right, so let's pray. We pray, O oh God, as we come this evening, the end of another day. We are grateful for the grace that you've given us this day. We thank you for protecting us, for, for giving us strength for the journey, for, for this for this journey that we are on, for our pilgrimage in this world, for our continual pilgrimage. And so, Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love, for your faithfulness to us, even though we have been unfaithful, you have remained faithful. And we thank you, Lord. Lord, we come at the end of another day and we, we thank you for, the, for the, 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 the beautiful weather. We thank you for the rain even because, Lord, we need the rain. The garden needs the rain. We need the rain for, for the watering of our, uh, the reservoirs and so on. We thank you. We thank you for, the, for your for your blessing upon us in so many ways, physically, in our own lives, spiritually, and, 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 and just your blessing upon our world. And so we thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. Lord, we, we, Lord, we pray for this world. You care for the world. You love the world. You love the world so much that you, Lord Jesus, you died for this world. So we pray for all those who lead and exercise authority in our world, for those in our own country, in our own community, for our prime minister, for members of parliament, for the mayors, for leaders. We pray not just for our own leaders, but we pray for leaders all over the world. We pray for those who are meeting in Lithuania. Um, the NATO leaders. We pray for them and the decisions that they have to make. Lord, uh, we pray for our leaders. Lord, especially those who seek to make decisions that is beneficial, righteous decisions for our world 
that will be of benefit to us rather than rather than bring wars and 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 conflict in our world we pray for those who are seeking to bring peace we pray for peacemakers lord in our world we pray that you'll use some leaders as peacemakers or peace brokers to to bring an end to war and conflict in our world we pray lord <clears throat> for that you'll raise up peacemakers to to negotiate as it were with putin and so that he will be he will he will end this conflict against ukraine and bring peace to that country again we pray for peacemakers in sudan the african community to come together and broker peace among the war in factions in sudan lord we raise up peacemakers we pray lord you promise that those who are peacemakers will, will be called your children. So bring peacemakers into the midst of these conflicts to, as it were, uh, convince and speak and use your Holy, by your Holy Spirit, use them to bring an end to the war and bring peace to those, in conf to those suffering from conflict. We pray for the refugees, those who flee for their own country, especially those in Sudan, Lord, who, who have fled to neighboring countries that don't have the resources for their own com community, much less to care for all these, uh, these people that are flooding in. And so, Lord, we pray for these refugees. All these people, Lord, have mercy upon them that we pray for the hospitality of their neighbors and we pray that you provide for them so that they can help these people as they fled their homeland. And so Lord, bring an end to the conflict so that these, the, these refugees will be able to return to their home, to rebuild their home in Ukraine, in Sudan, and wherever else in our world there is brokenness and conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer we pray for the church we pray lord for your your people everywhere we pray especially for our own church family here in forest gate and we pray for all the churches in our community we pray for all our churches here in newham all, all our churches in our deanery and all the various churches the baptist church and, the, and the highway church and all the different churches that proclaim the gospel of christ in word and deed. So Lord, we pray for all, all of your people. And we pray for united people. We pray, Lord, that you will unite us all under the one banner of Jesus Christ. And even though there may be a different name on the building, the, the name that we all bow to is the name of Jesus. And so Lord, make us united, we pray. Not just here in our community, but the church worldwide, east and west. Yeah. north and south, wherever the church may be. Make us united, Lord, so that in, in the power of your spirit, you will use us to bring, to bring uh, deliverance and bring the gospel uh, to, to those who are lost in the darkness of this world. And so, Lord, empower your people to be faithful in our witness to be loving to each other so that the world will see and believe. So Lord, make your church the living witness that you have called us to be, the hands and feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are sick. We continue to ask the Lord to bring healing and strength to the bodies and minds of those who are weak tonight. I won't name everyone on our prayer list, but Lord, you know their names, you know their needs. So pray for them tonight. Remember, O oh God, those who are suffering emotionally, physically, for those undergoing treatment for cancer. We ask for your intervention in their lives. 
Lord, use all the various means to bring healing and hope to them and their families. And so, Lord, hear us, we pray. For those who are elderly, who are suffering the effects of old age, of, of our broken bodies, and Lord, hear our prayer for them. Lord, we know that many of our members, many of those we know who are who are getting older, they're, even though their bodies are getting weaker, we know their faith is getting stronger and stronger. We thank you for that, O oh Lord. So strengthen their faith, Lord, more and more every day. And, and, and give them that blessed assurance that nothing, absolutely nothing in this life or in the next will be able to separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for ourselves tonight. We need you more than ever. We need you every moment of every day. We need you, Lord, to guide us, to strengthen us in our journey. And Lord, we, we entrust this night to you. We pray that you will take away any fear, any anxiety, any worry, of, of oh, that, that, that we may be going through at this time in our lives. Lord, you, you know, you know the, 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 the worries and the conflicts of all of our hearts. And so, Lord, we pray that you will remove fear and doubt and worry and anxiety so that we will find rest in you. We'll find peace in you. We will, we will be able to rest peacefully tonight, knowing, Lord, that you are in control of every molecule of our lives, every aspect of our being. We do not need to worry or fear the outcome tomorrow. So, Lord, give us rest tonight. Give us peace as we sleep. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The final collect for tonight. <clears throat> Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening and day is drawing to a close. Abide with us and with your whole church in the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of this world. Abide with us and with all your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers. <laughs>